This update is all about answering what our users are saying. You'll see a lot of new features that are listed here and even some that aren't. SpinLogic is now better streamlined than ever before. In this tutorial, I'm going to focus on three of these items. Quantity adjustment tools, complexity adjustments, and revised market comparables. The creation of a quantity correction factor tool is the single biggest change to SpinLogic in this round of development. We're going to run through four different examples and show you what each of the options on the quantity correction page do. Throughout these, assume that you know the following. The current proposal is for 30 units at $60 per unit, and historically, the basis price that you're using was a PO for 40 units at $45 a unit. Starting out with method one, the last time you purchased the 40 units, your proposal also included the pr price for quantity 30 at $50 per unit. So last time, let's assume that you were quoted for both quantity 30 and quantity 40. 30 was $50 a unit, 40 was $45 per unit. This method is relatively straightforward and simple. Simply say yes, a quantity factor should be applied, and choose the first item. The prior proposed, which is $45 per unit, uh, for quantity 30 is known. This asks what price was indicated in the prior time that you purchased. Um, you know from your prior purchase that it was $50. You add 50. It calculates a correction factor of 111% and automatically applies that in the analysis price. For the second example, let's assume that we have multiple data points for quantity and price. In the past, we've been provided with pricing for quantities 1 through 5 at $100 per unit, quantity 6 through 10 at $75 per unit, and the last PO that we purchased at was for quantity 40 at $45 per unit. This method is a little bit more involved, but is simple once you've done it a couple of times. Again, we say yes, a quantity factor applies, and this time we're going to go down to the second option that prices for three different quantities of this item are known. You're asked to provide the quantity start, end, and price for each of the pricing breaks. Based on the example provided, we know the following information. Based on the inputs, a quantity correction factor has been calculated as 109.3%. What this means is a 9% increase in price is expected. In the graph, you can see how price behaves for this particular part based on the information that we know. You can also see that the quantity that we want to purchase is above this line. What SpendLogic does is corrects for this, brings this point down, and in the analysis position applies the difference in price. It's, it may be somewhat confusing to see a 10% increase, but that 10% increase, or the 9.3% increase actually, refers to the known data point that we're using as the basis, which is quantity 40 at $45 per unit. The price we should be paying is 9.3% higher than the basis price. This has already been applied for you. For those of you that know statistics, R squared is a measure of fit. So let's say that our first quantity 1 through 5 is $1,000 instead of 100 what that's going to do is our data is going to be skewed and our R squared is only 65.3%. You want that to be as close to 100 as possible. This data is still valid and you still may be able to use it. However, you should be cautioned that a low R squared may mean that the answer is less reliable. The third method is the simplest of them all, so let's assume that you have no additional data to rely upon. Simply say, yes, a quantity adjustment factor applies and choose the third option, apply standard DOD quantity factors. What SpendLogic will do at that point is apply a factor of 95%. Now again, this is a 95% pricing curve, not a 95% decrement against price. Based on this 95% curve, a factor of 103.06% has been calculated in this case. This factor is something that is supported by DOD research, and as you read through the, the final word report, you can see the citation as to where this comes from. If you have no other information as to the relationship between quantity and price, this is a valid method to use in order to apply a quantity adjustment. The last method is method four. This is not a method that's likely to be used very often. It assumes that you know a specific pricing curve that should be applied. To use this method, simply say yes, a quantity factor should be applied, and choose 
the last option, input a specific quantity factor. You'll be asked to provide the factor as a percent. You'll then be asked to provide substantiation as to why that slope was chosen. The improvements that we've made to the complexity adjustment screen have to do with providing more complete information for auditors. Previously, SpendLogic only asked for one line for similarities, one line for differences, and one input for price adjustments. In the new version, similarities are all on one line still, but each difference has its own section. This allows for price adjustments for each individual difference that you, you mention. Let's say that what I'm buying is similar to something that has been purchased before. In this particular case, I would drop this box down to say that the item is similar to an item, and go ahead and identify what item that is that is similar to. For instance, I'll just put in cartridge oil filter. It then asks me for the similarities between the items. The next section talks about the differences between the two. You'll notice that there's an add button. What you want to do is include information for each of the differences. So if you have weight differences, for instance, on the technical side and a different paint or a different technical specification, each of those should have their own section. If you need to add additional differences, click the Add button. If you're done, you can go ahead and click Next. The new Market Comparables method starts out the same way that it always has. The Procurement Details screen has all the relevant information that ends up being used in the header and the search screens. Likewise, Proposed Price Details remains unchanged. Here on the Market Comparables screen is where things start to change. You can see that the layout is much more like competition. Now, SpendLogic utilizes the information that you input to determine a fair and reasonable price based on market comparables. Let's look at adding a source. The table includes all of the market comparables that we're using as sources in our example. Currently, I already have Acmeco and Zebra Inc. input. Let's see how we add a new source. This pop-up box looks very similar to what you would see in competition. After answering this final question, we can click Done and look at the results. Here you see that SpendLogic has found that Zebra Inc. has the lowest price, and therefore, this is the market comparable that will be used in the analysis position above. You can see that in the upper left-hand corner. Thank you for using SpendLogic. If you have any questions or comments, you can always reach us at help at or you can visit our help site at spendlogic.com help.